So I've had a very love-hate relationship with Netflix movies of late. Kodachrome had me feel a lot of different ways. First off, in the menu of Netflix, it says it's a comedy slash drama. It is not a comedy whatsoever. Just because Jason Sudeikis is in it, do not be fooled. This is a full-on drama. It's heavy. It's a tearjerker. I mean, it gets really depressing, and I did not see that coming. First half dragged a bit. Took a little while to get going. I think it had a little too much setup here. But right when Jason Sudeikis got to Chicago to lock in this band, that's where this movie started getting really, really good and didn't let go. I also thought this whole record label theme was very effective. I think it worked and it felt very current with our times and how he was a guy who was all about authenticity and showing that angle where he wasn't selling out his soul. So that felt unique in a way to give the character something he does from a very updated stance as a record label producer. He's not just trying to make money. He's a guy in this world that doesn't want him anymore, in a career that doesn't want guys like him anymore trying to fight through it. And Zoe, played by Elizabeth Olsen, who I never knew was also the younger sister of the Olsen twins, was great here. Her character was really necessary and worked really well as the nurse of Ed Harris. And I like that the reveal about her, that she had skeletons too, and that she was the cheater in her divorce, not her husband. So she was almost afraid to commit to people because she doesn't want to hurt them. Which we've all met people like that, and it worked because her and Jason Sudeikis' characters had great chemistry, both had a lot of fear in them, and at first it seemed a little like, oh yeah, of course they're gonna get together. But it still had to happen because it really worked well when it got going there. Tension, how it built up and how it wrapped around them. And how really his dad brought them together. I would say he even had that in mind. And this proved Jason Sudeikis, I wasn't sure how I would feel about him doing a serious role. He did really good. I was super shocked here. I believed every scene he knew where he was, what he was thinking at any given moment, and didn't overact. And it's really hard to hang with a legend like Ed Harris and he did his job. The music was also really good in this movie. A lot of songs you can notice and it represented the main character really well. And my favorite scene has to be when Ed Harris's character finally breaks and cries to his son in the hospital. Really, really hard to watch. Really worked. Not for the faint of heart. And Ed Harris wasn't mailing it in. Sometimes movies like this, low budget Netflix, you'll see big actors sometimes kind of just get through it. But Ed Harris, I felt, gave 100%. Again, a complaint I have is they could have really chopped out a lot in the beginning here. They started with little humor, especially when he was in the office, Jason Sudeikis, and just didn't really work well to me. Just get to the Kodachrome point of why he needs to go and help his dad. You don't have to show so much backstory with him in the office. Just get it a little quicker. Also, the scenes felt a little off when the group was at Jason Sudeikis' uncle's house. When Ed Harris just brought up randomly that he slept with his brother's aunt, I know the guy's a bad guy, but He's not that evil. I mean, that is so low, and that even felt out of character for him. That whole scene was weird to me. And there was no resolution between those family members who aren't main characters, but they kind of built them up a little bit, and you started liking them, and they just left the kitchen, and we never saw them again. So that kind of felt out of nowhere and not necessary, just to show how evil this guy is, and I don't think it worked. I'd rather just take that scene out because it took a little bit of the realism away from me. And some of the dialogue, especially in scenes like this, were too on the nose and just moments where you're like, no one would talk like this. Not a lot, but a little bit in this movie. But the ending really paid off. If you're patient with the beginning, the second half was a joy to watch. It was a good, sad story and convincing that he would like his father at the end and that even this underlying love he had for his son outweighed it all in the end and that love can always come back out of nowhere. Even though the father can't be a good father in the right way, he still loves his son and wanted the best for him. And I like how it resolved where he got the girl at the end and how they both had their separate relationships with Ed Harris. And when you have three really good characters and three really good actors, you really can't go wrong. I think for a Netflix movie, this was pretty damn good. I'm gonna give it an eight. Let me know what you thought of it down below. I respond to everybody. And please subscribe. I do a bunch of movie reviews, TV reviews, celebrity interviews, and free giveaways. So you don't want to miss any of those, and I'll see you next time.